Without having um, the, uh, the necessity, to, necessity to have two or three machines running apart, you save all that queue time, all that uh, potential for error when you're handling parts and loading parts, getting chips behind the parts, all that kind of thing. Where here, it hands the part off, you're doing milling, you're doing turning, you're doing all the things that you need to do in one machine. German engineering, German precision. When I think of that, I'm thinking spinner. When I think of spinner, I'm excited to talk about it here in North America with my buddy Brian. Now, there's a lot of different machines, and today we're gonna talk about the micro turn. I'm gonna let Brian do all the details because he is the wisdom. I am just the guy that does the interview. So Brian, let's talk about this machine as a broad overview, and then we'll pick right. and choose some of the parts that we think the audience needs to know more about. So let's talk about micro turn. All right, so this is a micro turn LT. BS. The L is the linear rail in the, in the center, gang style tooling for super accuracy. B is the B axis head. LBT, T is the turret down below with milling and turning capabilities and Y axis. And S of course is the addition of the sub spindle. Well that's even simple enough, someone like I can catch on to that. So all right, we have a turret. This center area here is for some ultra precision type components. And we have a tool changer with some pretty good horsepower and RPM here as well. Let's first talk about precision, because I know this machine is a lot about precision. Let's talk there. Yeah, we're talking sub-micron accuracy um, with, the, with the gang style tooling. And when you're running a part, you always have that one or two dimensions that have to have they have to be perfect, and that's what, the, that's what the linear rail is for. And we have components out there right now, every day they're getting tighter and tolerant, so sub-micron, incredible and necessary. So now let's talk about this head. 72 tools, I believe, go through this tool yeah, changer. This particular machine has 72 tools on it. We got 20 horsepower in the head, 12,000 RPM. That's a good amount of horsepower for something that looks so small. <laughs> exactly. Now we have the turret and we have a main spindle and a sub spindle. Actually looks like Heimbuch chucks we have in here right now. Can we talk about what it means to be able to multitask? When we're talking about multiple machines previously in a lot of shops needing to do different operations, turning and milling, and then combining those in, what are some of the benefits that come in to be able to, to combine everything? Well, without, without having um, the, uh, the necessity to necessity to have two or three machines running apart. You save all that queue time, all that uh, potential for error when you're handling parts and loading parts, getting chips behind the parts, all that kind of thing. Where here, it hands the part off, you're doing milling, you're doing turning, you're doing all the things that you need to do in one machine. It's for me, from my perspective, you know, you're the, you're the guy that has all the wisdom, but I couldn't agree with you more, it's so important. Something I see that's a little bit, I think, unique here, Brian, is it looks like both the main spindle and the sub spindle go up and down. Uh, does it do that, first of all, and secondly, if it does, can I bar feed? Well, this machine, the, uh, the both the spindles are the X and the Z axis, so all the, the diametric tolerances and the lengths are handled by the, by the spindles. Uh, y axis are handled at the turret and the, and the B axis. And then, yes, you can bar feed this machine. You can bar feed spindle length bar. And uh, when you're dealing with the kind of accuracies that we're, we're working with here, that's probably your best bet anyway. So when I'm looking at this, Brian, and I see it looks pretty compact, but there's more than meets the eye, right? You can get bigger components than you might think in here. Oh, yeah, you can put, you can put up to, I believe, an 8-inch chuck in here. And you could also maybe even fix your 5-axis parts. So you can do full 5-axis machining on this machine. That is impressive. Just looking at it from the front, I wouldn't think that that was possible, but there's so much that could be done in a machine like this. But I have another question for you, and you're kind of standing in front of it. It looks like a really cool screen, because the last spinner machine that you and I talked about had a nice screen on there as well, yeah. but it was more of something I had seen over and over yeah, again. Yeah, that was a Fanuc control. Yes, and what is this one? This is a Siemens control with a, with a spinner front. This is the uh, uh, touchscreen control. Very large control, easy to use um, for the guys. For the guys that are used to, you know, uh, iPads and and their cell phones, this is a great control. It, it, I find that. That's where we need to all go in the sense of we're all on our phones every single day, we're all on our smart tablets every single day, and, and this is the way that we can get the next generation of people to get into the machines quicker. Would you yeah, agree with that? Yeah, it, it, it sends that little sense of excitement and, and, uh, and user-friendliness, user usability. Um, the technology is tried and true. It's not like 
you know, 30 years ago when they had a touch screen and they wore out after after six months. These are, you know, glass panels. It's they're, they're great. All right, Brian. Well, I'm going to leave you with this last question, and it has to do with automation because you and I both know that automation is a buzzword. It is king right now. It's how shops are becoming uh, productive and profitable. Is this machine able to adapt to automation as well? Oh, this machine right here is set up for automation right now. It's got bar, it's got a uh, uh, robot interface, auto doors. It's uh, it's set to go. It's built ready. It's we'll made for it. We don't have to create or change anything about it, do we? No, this is it. Yeah. Wow, it's ready Brian, to I am fascinated. I am amazed. I love learning about this type of technology. Thank you for sharing it with me. For the audience out there watching right now, think about that. Ultra precision a spindle that turns, a turret at the bottom, a bar fed situation, high accuracy, tool change 72 in this one, set up for full automation with a user friendly interface. Does it get any better? It doesn't get any better than this. This is Spinner, my friends. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed learning from Brian as much as I have. Brian, you're amazing. Thanks, man.